the origin story of the predator in the world of the Comanche Nation 300 years ago. Naru, a skilled warrior, fights to protect her tribe against one of the first highly evolved predators to land on Earth. Prey is up next on Inside Movie. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, welcome to another episode of Inside Movies. Uh, my name is George McHale, I'm a comic book maker, and I am joined by the editor-in-chief of Merck Publishing, Murphy, novelist, Andrew Buckley, and writer-illustrator, GMB Kamichuk. Guys, thanks for uh, for being on the show. Let's get into it. Uh, what's the good? What do we like about Prey? There is finally a good new Predator movie. I've never been like a huge Predator fan. Predators look cool, and I like Predator cosplay more than I've ever liked a Predator movie. But that shit was awesome. It was really, it was really cool and also gruesome, but like in some really badass ways, like with the, the net thing coming in and just going like, "Ugh, it's yeah. great." I loved it. I've been uh, pleasantly referring to that as the mulch net, and wishing I had one for gardening purposes. <laughs> right wasn't that amazing oh my god mulch net um yeah no i love uh the the first predator um with arnold schwarzenegger see our previous uh, review it, we've talked about it here on inside movies before and next week we've got predator 2 the danny glover movie and we'll be talking about that one um but for this one i really liked how it kind of just expanded on the lore and you know we got kind of a new looking predator and uh, it was kind of back to basics a bit with uh, just them stalking the prey and not just stalking humans i also really liked that they were hunting animals as well i liked it oh the battle with the bear was badass just to alliterate <laughs> i with her like stuck underneath and then thinking that you know the bear is gonna best it and then the way that it just like just rips it apart uh that was I could feel the terror. Like they did such a good job of putting you, you in her shoes for that scene. Yeah. When she's in the beaver dam, like looking out and you're like, Oh man, <laughs> no, no. Which also reminds me of one of my favorite lines from the movie is when her and her brother are stuck and she's telling the story about a beaver that like not off its own foot. And then she, he's, she, he goes, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he goes, she says, I'm smarter than a beaver. I was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> that was such a good line. Nero was such a well-crafted character, in, and the uh, director made such a point of showing us her cleverness with no exposition. Just zoom in on what she sees, zoom in on her reaction. Now we know she knows it, and move on. Like, she spots that beaver dam just before the bear is there. So she's already got it locked. Like, oh shit, if things go wrong, I guess I'll run over there. And things go wrong and she runs over there. Like there's there's so much of that throughout the movie. And I guess this is a spoilery review. So all the times where she sees the stump and you know she's going to lay a trap there. She sees the uh, harpoons hitting the target. There's no exposition to say, hmm, I'd better make a trap using those things. But you know that is what is forming in her mind. And it's just so well directed for that. They didn't take anything away from the whole Predator mythos. They only added to it, which a lot of the Beyond Predator 2, they kind of took a lot of liberties, especially with whatever that last one was that Shane Black did. Like, they always took some kind of liberty with the with the story. This one was very, very, very respectful. It was supposed to be 300 years ago, um, so the Predator's technology wasn't what it, we've seen in the past ones because it's supposed to be in the past. So he doesn't have the same like plasma cannon and shit. I like that they were kind of respectful of that. Like his camouflage was not, uh, it was wider than the, uh, like the Arnie version, which is a lot thinner. So you can kind of, it blends a little better. So I, I like that they took all that into consideration in making the prequel that was actually like a prequel rather than like, you know, aliens and Prometheus where Prometheus has better technology than aliens. And that makes no sense. Absolutely. It's almost um, like the movie took Predator 1 and Predator 2 and said, here are two little nods to it. Now, one is obvious, Predator 2's nod with the gun that appears in Danny Glo at the end of Predator the 2. Danny Glo Glo yes. a gun. We've seen that flintlock before. It's there. Direct nod. I got to ask you guys, though, this is an opinion question. When, her, when Naru's brother is cut, 
by the trappers. Is that not exactly the mark that Billy makes in Predator 1 on himself when he says, you know, there's something hunting us and it ain't no man, that he stands there to protect his own tribe and cut himself in exactly the same way? Is that, that's got to be on purpose, right? I have information about that. You have information. Tell I me do. the information. Uh, what's the name? Does anybody know, remember what the director's name is? This John so, Trachtenberg. Trachtenberg, yeah. So he he always liked the whole Billy sequence, and apparently the Billy sequence in Predator was actually a lot longer, where he did face off against the Predator, but they cut it in the final theatrical release. So all you get to see is him do that movement, and then you hear him scream, and that's li literally it. Uh, he always thought that it was kind of robbed um, from him as a character. So he, this is kind of a weird little tie into that and a little bit of a respectful nod to the Billy character in the original Predator, which I, again, super nice that they did that. Yeah. Another callback that they do is that he says like, um, you know, uh, yeah, if it bleeds, we can kill, kill, kill it. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was dope. And uh, yeah, this director, John Trachtenberg, he also did uh, 10 Cloverfield Lane, which was blew me away. Like that, that movie with John Goodman in the He's cellar. Right. Yes. That was like one of my favorite horror movies of the year that it came out. So I was definitely looking forward to this, mostly because of him, because the, the Predator movies that we've had have been kind of underwhelming ever since the original, really. Well, and it's interesting you say that, because when I looked that up, too, and I was like, oh, he's excellent at character-driven pieces. How is this going to work? Well, guess what? They made a character-driven movie. And so, wow, it was fantastic, you know? I bet if you totaled up the number of minutes the actual Predator alien appears on screen, it's probably only a handful of minutes, right? And everything else is carried by the performances of those other actors, and it's phenomenal. Her name is amazing. Amber Midthunder is her name. What a badass name. <laughs> you got to do something with a name like that. <laughs> Destined for history. Got to be. Uh, I did like that they gave like the Predator some new weapons, though, like the shield. And he had like normally he wears like that metal mask, and he had this bone mask, which was like pretty dope. So they're kind of mixing it up a bit. Like the Predator's design is so cool that yeah, you know, you got to be a little nervous to like mess with it. But I, I think what they did with it was like pretty cool. Yeah, the Predator in this movie is definitely like hacking and slashing his way through the competition in ways we have not seen. The practical effects are amazing. Oh, He's 100% yeah. born in blood in this movie. Um, you know what else is born of blood? Murphy. Me. It's me. No. <laughs> born of Blood is uh, Merck Publishing's historical fiction that features the Queen of Sparta. Um, if you are a fan of Merck Fix at all, you know that the Spartan World Order is kind of this massive organization that is the head of all of the best mercs in the world, except for Miss Meow, uh, because Miss Meow doesn't need them. Um, and this story, Born of Blood, and is going to lay the whole groundwork for a whole universe. It's got a, a really, really positive feedback from Kickstarter backers and fans so far. Um, if you haven't checked it out, it's going to be at your local comic shop uh, this September. Uh, and towards the end of the month. So go tell your shop that you want to add it to your pull list, get it on, uh, get it on your pull list before uh, FOC uh, here in just uh, two weeks. Check it out. There you go. Yes. And I've included a link to the Merck publishing website in the description of this video. So you can also go on there, but you know, support your local comic book store and ask them to bring it in as well. Uh, all right, let's get into the bad. What do we not like about prey? CGI animals are the worst. I know, I know, I know they have to. I know they have to. But do they have to? They're so bad. And that's not going to age well. I rewatch Predator 2, obviously. Uh, you know, every couple of years, honestly, I rewatch Predator 2. And the practical effects hold up, even though they're dated. They hold up as visceral and real feeling, even if you know how they did it. CGI never ages well. And those scenes are not going to age well. It's so funny, though. That's, I feel like we were at a point where CGI was starting to look really, really realistic. And it's like, it's kind of started to revert in the last few years. And I don't know if it's because the, the studios are just trying to save money and they don't want to, they, they can't, you know, put that much time and, 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 you know, salary into it. But yeah, I agree. On that kind of same route, though, I know that like the Predator design is so awesome. Um, this one felt it real lean, you know, and um, his fingers just didn't look real. 
It's such a nitpick, but his hands just looked so fake to me. The predator's hands, the alien yeah, predator's, predator's hands, hands, didn't look real yeah. enough to be. If he, okay. right. No, they looked like co- they looked like costume gloves. I know they Ooh. were costume gloves, but it was like- <laughs> what we're hearing is that <laughs> what we're hearing is that Murphy hates people with lean hands and thinks they look fake. Isn't that right? Well, so no, his body was so These lean. These are made of like... rubber, actually. These are not real, in fact. These are just rubber fingers. <laughs> hey, and don't forget, hey, I mean, you remember everything all, everything, everywhere all at once. I love a thick finger. Ugh. That one, it just didn't, I feel like it didn't match the rest of his, like, whole physique. I don't, it's such a nitpicky thing. I have so little <laughs> negatives about this movie. I had to figure out something. Uh, for me, I've got a, a negative and... I felt like I was a little confused at who some of the characters were, some of the male characters um, in, uh, you know, in her group there. Sometimes I'd be like, "Is that her brother? Did his, did her brother just die? What's going on?" And then, I saw that at one point too. Did yeah. you think that too? Yeah. So I wasn't alone. So I was like, "What's you know?" I I think that you know they maybe could have made them just distinguished a little bit differently. You know, maybe with makeup or something like that, but because they all had long black, long hair and weren't wearing shirts and they're all pretty skinny. I got to call foul on you guys. They literally gave them like, they gave them war paint so you could differentiate them like at a distance. Gentlemen. They also had like the, everyone was wearing different accoutrements. Right. I don't know. That was one of the things I was going to say as a good is that it was cool that you could keep track of everyone in a, in like predators, uh, Never knew who was living or dead, but in this one, I felt like I could keep track of who was there. So no, uh, I can sympathize with. No, I can sympathize with George a little bit. I was, but was mostly because it was. I didn't really care about the other characters. I mean, it was obvious that the brother and the and Naru, I think, was was the main, and that's fine. But there was one part where somebody died. I thought, was that was that her brother who just died? Uh, but it it wasn't because he was right there. Um, I had two nitpicky um, negatives about it. Uh, the first was uh, the slow pacing in the second act, like where it just kind of, for whatever reason, it felt like it ground to a little bit of a halt for like 10 minutes. And I started to zone out a little bit. But it, came, it brought it back real quick once all the trappers started dying. Um, and the other thing is, I, I like the whole Predator mythos. I like all the backstory. The comic books that were released after Predator were, were supposed to be canon. And this movie actually kind of rolled over it a little bit because the whole flintlock thing was supposed to be a predator fighting that pirate whose name is on the gun. And then the pirate's crew turned against him and killed him. And he gave that gun to the predator, the elder predator in Predator 2, as a, like, a, you know, respectful warrior to warrior kind of thing. Uh, but obviously that didn't happen. <laughs> they ruined it in this. They ruined it. Well, it didn't happen yet. Yeah, but it did because the yeah. gun predates it. Um, for me, uh, one thing that I didn't like about the movie was when she's facing off against the bear in the tree there, and uh, and then all of a sudden she's like knocked unconscious. She's back at camp, and her brother had like rescued her off screen, dragged her away, and then went back out again. It's like that was a really tense moment, and I think they just kind of like bailed on it. And I, it didn't really work for me. I'll give you that. I don't really have. I don't really disagree with you, but I part like I personally think it would have been wasted time on the screen. You know, when that was her, her getting back to camp and just waking up. I think they they did that because they wanted you to feel the same disappointment that she was feeling when she woke up and she's like, "Oh, I failed." You know. Yeah. No. That that makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's get into the skinny. Let's give her final grades uh, for prey. Um, I'll go first. Uh, I'll give it a B plus. I really enjoyed it quite a lot. And um, I, I really like this idea of doing Predator movies in this fashion. I would love to see the Predator go up against ninjas or go up against, uh, you know, knights or Vikings or things like this and and just kind of jump around in different time zones for when the Predator has visited Earth. That, that sounds amazing. So um, I'm all in for more movies like this. Give me... A predator in Westeros. I just want to see. I just want to know what happens. Predators versus dragons. Anyways, uh, I'm going to give this five out of five time bomb. I loved it. I thought as far as a predator movie goes, it was everything I could have wanted. And then as far as just a regular movie, I was enthralled. 
Yeah, I'll have to agree with you. I'm going to give it five out of five Danny Glovers, which is the <laughs> highest rank you can get on a Predator film, I think. <laughs> uh, this thing had some badass kills, and um, I got to give it four Tomahawks on a string out of five because that whole little whippy move maneuver she does is great. Love How it. did we not even mention that? It's that so was so cool. cool. Okay, so that's going to do it for uh, our review of Prey. Go back and watch our review of the original Predator and come back next week for Predator 2. Born of Blood is coming into your comic book stores this September, so make sure you go to your comic book store and ask them to bring it in for you. Also, hit up Merck Publishing. Link in the description of the video. Uh, until next time, I've been George McHale, joined by Murphy, Andrew Buckley, and GMB Kamichuk. Follow along on our Facebooks, our Instagram, our Twitters, all that in the description of this video. And until next time, peace.